Carnival Sinks and City in Wells Fargo live in two different worlds. Hello fellow traders everywhere. Adam Hewison here, co-founder of Market Club with your midday market co update for Tuesday, the 17th of January. Silly season's finally over. Good news. We'll be looking at City and Wells Fargo. It's a tale of two banks, and you'll see how our trade triangles get both of those right. We'll also be looking at Carnival Corp, that disastrous, disastrous sinking of their vessel this past weekend. A terrible disaster, but let's take a look at how it affected the stock. We'll also be looking at R.R. Donnelly and & Sons and Chicago, the printers, and also Sears Holdings, also in Chicago. Traders' perception. This is what people are thinking right now. Put Europe on the black back burner. Europe gets downgraded over the weekend, including the ECB rescue package, and the markets move higher. So what is happening, really? This is a case of the markets having already discounted all the bad news. We believe today's market action teaches us an important lesson. And here's the lesson. Market perception trumps everything. Now let's go to the charts and Market Club's trade triangle technology. So here's my home page. And we're going to go to the Portfolio Manager, and we're going to be looking at a number of stocks today, starting with the S&P as we normally do. Now, the S&P moved over 1,300 today for the first time in quite some time. It's actually putting in a nice performance. And if we scope this out to six months, you can see it's looking very, very nice. So if we also look at a simple line chart, and uh, you can see we actually have gotten long this market uh, and it's doing very well for us. So we put the monthlies in. You can see we got the monthlies that came in at 12.92. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the market's at 1300 right now. 1300. And uh, the market action looks good. Uh, so what can I say? It looks like we've got a base. Uh, perception trumps everything, as we said earlier. And it looks like this wants to go higher. So let's go to our next market. We're going to go back uh, to look at silver. Let's put a chart, a candlestick chart on. And this is what we talked about silver today. We thought that this this is not a positive day. You can see we tried to get as high as we were five days ago. Didn't do that. This Donchian channel, I think, is going to stop this market. Pay very close attention to the PSAR, the parabolic stop and reverse. I think if we go under probably the lows we saw at 29.50, 29.48, I think this market's going to come into a, a bout of heavy profit taking and some short selling. Remember, our trade triangles are mixed on this one. Monthly down, weekly and daily up, plus 60, it's a trading range. Also, you're at a negative divergence coming in here. This is, this I think, is very important to remember. And we can see this market come back down into an oversold condition, in my opinion. Let's see how that plays out. But we're also going to be looking at gold. Gold is also popped over that mythical area we talked about yesterday, just like it did on the 12th right here. This day, we traded as high as 1661. We traded today at 1667. However, there was no follow through. And it would appear as that we're going to see this market come down also on depression. Now, the key level here is to look at the 1632 level. I know it's $22 away, but these markets have a tendency to move very, very quickly. You can see our longer term monthly trade trend is still negative, indicating that we may see further weakness in this market. But this is definitely the level to look at, the PSAR. We talked about this before, 1632. That's where it hits, and that's today's action. It'll probably be a little higher to tomorrow if we don't hit it today. So let's see how that plays out. Also, this is a classic example of a negative divergence. We talked about negative divergences before and how important they are. This is a great example of a negative divergence. Negative divergence means we saw the market move higher like this. See the angle going higher like this, and the divergences are going like this. They're flat to lower. Actually, in this case, they're lower, so it's not a good example. But they're heading down, and the market's heading up. That means it's going to change around. In my opinion, we'll probably see this market come down and see some little negative action. Uh, that's what we'll be looking for. Whether that happens or not will have to remains to be seen, but watch that PSAR. That's very important in my mind. So let's go to our next market. Next market we're looking at is copper. Copper, again, has put in a nice performance. It looks as though it's trying to base out. Remember, this reflects pretty much what the uh, equity markets are doing. And we're going to go back six months. You can just see and move this up here. So it looks as though we're trying to base out, trying to get that energy level uh, that we talked about before, making that energy feel just move around here. So let's see how that plays out. Uh, but again, it's going to be reflective of what's going on in the equity markets. If the equity markets continue to be firm, and the trend certainly is up there, then I think we'll see this market do better on the upside. But certainly the 3.75 level is an area of concern. It's the area we saw right here. 
and that's where we hit today. So that looks like it's resistant for the time being. I would not be surprised to see a pullback in this market. And again, we're looking at the divergences that we see in the market, and uh, clearly there's no divergences here because we're still, the momentum is good. So I like the way this is looking, and if you look at our weeklies, we've been long from 3.63, and of course our long-term monthly still negative on this market, and I think that's the case you want to be. So 70, it's emerging, an emerging trend. That's the bottom line. So let's go to our next market. And we're going to be looking at crude oil. Crude oil continues to consolidate. And we've talked about this pattern before with plus 80, which means it's a strong upward trend in strong hands. All of our trade triangles are in a green mode. And if you look at the market in just in terms of an energy field, it would appear as though we're building this energy field right here. And this is the key level, the 104 level. We've talked about this before. 104 is the key. If we move over 104, then the target zone is going to be 120. That's $120 a barrel for crude oil. If that's going to crimp the economy, who knows? But the reality is, is China going to come in? Is India going to overtake us? Who knows? But the reality is perception. Remember perception. So let's take this off the screen and go to our next market. And the next market we're looking at is going to be copper. Uh, we looked at copper. Hold on. Let me go back uh, to crude oil. And let me go to the next market. Here we are. The dollar index. This is, uh, again, this is a market that's beginning to consolidate. Looking a little bit tired, however. Uh, no follow through. But again, we have been moving sideways for the past 10 days in this market. So the action we're seeing, uh, which is not negative right now, it's actually uh, potentially positive in terms of just consolidating to move higher eventually. Score plus, 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 plus 90, strong trend, and that's the key thing to remember. That's the takeaway from this market, the dollar index, is a strong upward trend. So let's see how that plays out. The 80-50 area is a key level of support, and I think the other thing you could look at in this index is the following. I think we take everything off the screen, and we look at the PSAR, which comes in right around today, around the 80.63 level. So when I say 80.50, I think that's a key level to look at in this market. If we go below that level, I think we've probably topped out for the time being. We'll see the market come down and perhaps test the lower end of the, the Donchian trade channel, which in this case comes in around 79.50. So let's see how that plays out. Let's so clear the screen, go to our next market. I'm so glad that we've got over silly season because that really is uh, just a pain in terms of trading. Now here's a good example. This is the euro. Uh, as you know, I'm going to let's scope this in just a little bit further. We know the trend is down clearly minus 100 strong downward trend for the euro against the US dollar. Let's just go for the last three months and scope this down. You can see basically it really has had a hard time rallying. Uh, one of the key levels to look at now in my mind is the PSAR. That's about the midpoint of the Donchian trade channel. It comes in at 128.38, uh, which is pretty much, uh, we'd have to make new highs here. I don't think that's going to happen. This market I would suspect is going to get more and more docile, uh, but again, Stops are always important because things do change and perception does change in the marketplace and you have to be willing to change with that perception. We've been short this market from 139 on a longer term strategies, working extremely well. The market's at 127, so it's 12 big handles. And the last weekly was 136. So you can see this is, we're doing very, very well in the euro. So let's go to our next market. And the next market we're looking at is the CRB Commodity Index. Um, now again, what we're looking for, the pattern we're seeing here is a trading range plus 55. Remember anything from 50 to 65 is a trading range. Anything from 70 to 80 is an emerging trend and from 85 to 100 strong trend. We've got all this labeled on the blog, but here's what we're looking at in this market. So if we look at the Reuters Jeffrey, this, this is gonna be the great indicator for inflation if it's going to come back. So this is what we're looking at right now. We're looking at this uh, this type of pattern. And somewhere over this level, and that's around the 315, 316 level. If we go over there, I think we probably put in a pretty good base to propel this market higher. But for the time being, you've got mixed results. You've got the monthly negative, which is a longer term from 335. The market's currently at 310. 
N. And the weekly is long from 309. And the daily is basically telling you the momentum. Daily-wise, it's 309.81. So basically, you've got a mixed picture, this 55 reading. And I think that's going to probably take the place. I would not be surprised to see a move and test the lower end of this range around the 305 level. So let's see how that plays out. But generally speaking, the market looks a little bit choppy here. I think gold is going to be a little bit defensive tomorrow, which may put some pressure on other commodity markets and push this index a little lower. So we'll see how that plays out. But uh, let's clear the screen and go to our next market. Uh, the next market is Citigroup. Now, this is interesting. If you remember, Citigroup came out with their earnings today. They were missed clearly missed what they were looking at. They, their profits were down 11% on Citi, uh, missed, completely missed the guesstimate on the uh, street. And here's an interesting point. Our monthly trade rounds still short, never changed. Uh, only the weekly changed uh, from 27.94. And you can see that the market's still in the trading range. But again, the longer term trends, and this is the key thing I want to share with you today about these markets are very, very important. Sometimes you get swept away with the minutiae of the day, but the reality is the longer-term trends are what really make these markets work. So especially in stocks, you should be looking at the monthly trade triangle right here. So again, we never, never changed our mind in this rally, even though we had a lot of pressure from people calling us up and said, well, aren't you bullish on this city back yet? No. It's going to take a while for city to get out of this mess. Now let's go and take a look at another market another banking stock, and that's Wells Fargo. Now look at the difference here. Long from 27.54, we the triangles on Citi, and I'm going to put this down so we get this right for you, the triangles on Citi were down at Citi on the monthly, and, uh, and that's a big trend, and they're up in Wells Fargo. That's the difference in these two. The monthly trend is up in Wells Fargo and down in City. This happened before. Okay, there's the monthly signal right here. That happened weeks ago. And it happened actually the end of December. So again, you caught the move up and the City Bank never really you in City in fact Let's, this is the 23rd of December. Let's take clear the screen. Let's go back to City just for a second, and I'll show you what I mean. So back to City on the 21st of January, excuse me, 3rd of January, 27.94, it said get out of shorts, which we did, and now the market's moved up. So you protected yourself. The triangles protected you on the way up. You got long Wells Fargo on the way up. Nice profits, but you covered yourself very well in this. That's what the trade triangles do. It's not rocket science. It's just mathematics and a very simple program that works extremely well. So let's go to our next markets. We're going to go past there. We're going to be looking at Sears Holding. Now, Sears Holding had a big move up today. Now, we've been short on Sears from this, from December 14th. That was our last major sell signal, 51 14, 51, 14. This is the first time we've had a signal. That's today, 37.90. That's to cover short positions. Not to go long, but cover short positions. So you can say from 37.90, uh, let's call it 38. Uh, from here, it's about $13, uh, $13 profit, uh, nice profit in a relatively short period of time in less than a month. So just around one month, you made a nice profit in this market. So let's see how this plays out. But generally speaking, this trend clearly is not turned around yet. And I'm sure it was very oversold. If you go down here, oh, it was very oversold back here, actually, for some time. And this is the other thing with markets getting overbought and oversold. They can stay overbought and oversold for quite some time, like they did back here. You were going from around about the... Uh, November 10th all the way through to the end of November. And the, here you basically went the December 19th, let's say, all the way through to the beginning of January, January 9th, uh, before things change. So again, I think it's very important to use these triangles because you've got a plus 50 score, which means it's a perfect trading range. So that's what you'd be looking at, the Williams percent R and the parabolic and as well as the Donchian trade channels to trade this market. You know our rules on trading in trading markets as opposed to trending markets. This is a trading market right now. So looking at our next market, we're looking at 
Carnival. And of course, this is the market that really, really was bad news. Now, again, if you look at our trade triangles, we're short from 40.56. Market's trading at 29.41. So even before this disaster happened in Italy, it is a tragedy. I mean, you don't think of modern line as that big sinking. And uh, I'm sure there'll be a, lots of inquiries. And it's very sad people would lose, lose their lives in today's age of modern marine sciences. But let's go out and just look at Carnival for not just the last couple of months, but let's go out and look at, let's say, a, a couple of years, let's say. And as you can see, Carnival, and I'll just put our monthly one in here. You can see Carnival came in here at 4067. This is back on February 23rd. That's 2011. So it's almost a year ago we had a major sell signal. Even we, who knew that you would see a disaster happen in Italy. No one knew, but the reality is the stock was sinking already. That's what happens with the trade trials and how, why they're so powerful and why you can use them to your advantage in the marketplace. So looking at our next market, and that's R.R. Donnelly Company in Chicago, another Chicago company, minus 100. And you can see we're short from 1859 right here. Uh, again, these markets tend to telegraph what they're going to do before they happen. Remember, we had a signal in the S&P 500 to be a buyer a few uh, about a week or so ago, and people say, "Well, you know, it's going to go down. It's going to go down." No, they telegraph what's going to happen. It's a perception, and as you can see from this market, from 1859, the market's currently trading at 12.37. Huge move. That's six dollars. That's almost 30 percent in a very short period of time. In Really, that's since, uh, let me just scope this out a little further. That's since last year, August of last year. So nice move on the downside. Uh, again, uh, signal, uh, let's put our weeklies in and you can get an idea where we are. So to put a triangle in, I'll take it off. Just simply click here, see how it takes it off and puts it in. So there's our last signal. That's today at 14.25 of DBS Seller. And of course, it's worked out very well. It's currently a trip trading at 12.37. So let's go to our next market. And that's going to be, hmm, I don't think so. I think we've covered all the markets we want to cover today. We've done a lot of stuff. Yep, that is the last one. So hey, this is Adam Hewison for Market Club. If you're not a member, uh, you may want to take advantage of our membership. Uh, we have an $8.95 special uh, starting in 2012. So for just $8.95, you can get all these tools, kick them around, see if Market Club's right for you. It could be a, it could be the difference between a winning year in 2012 or a break-even year. There's going to be some great opportunities in these markets in 2012. Adam Hewison for Market Club. I'll be here tomorrow. Have a successful and profitable day trading. Thanks for watching.